Hello class, today we'll be talking about 12.2, Measures of Central Tendencies. So with this section, we're going to determine the mean of a data set, we're going to determine the median of a data set, the mode of a data set, and the mid-range of a data set. So some key things that you want to look at when we talk about the mean. So the mean is the sum of the sum of the data items divided by the number of items. Basically, you're just doing what? Taking the average. So it says mean is equal to the summation of X or the summation of the data items all over the total number of items. So that's what your N is. Your N represents the total number of items. And the... Um, the summation of X is equal to what? It represents the sum of all data items. So basically, you're adding up all the data items and you're dividing it by the total number of data items that you have. You're taking average. So anytime you see mean, you know you're doing average. So let's look at a question doing this. So it says find the percentage, the mean percentage of adults in 10 countries who agree that invest, investiveness is, is, uh, can be learned. Inventiveness. So let's look at this. So we said it can be learned. So we need to be looking at the green. So we need to be looking at these right here. So now, we need to do what? Add them together. So, we have the summation of X over N. This would just equal to 92 plus 84 plus 84 plus 80 plus 78 plus 77 plus another 77 plus 77 plus 75 plus 75 all over 10. Because it tells us we have 10 adults. All right, 10 countries. There's 10 different countries. So, now when we add all these things together, for our top number, we should get what? 799 over 10. And that should equal roughly 79.9. And that should mean... which we also represent as X bar. So basically just taking the average of all these different percentages and dividing it by the total number, which is 10, and then you should get 79.9. So let's look at this. Let's say if you have more than one of the same number. Like in that last question, we did have more than 177 and want more than one. Um, we had more than 177 and we had more than one. Um, 84 and it's 75. So when you look at this, now this kind is saying that you would do what? Take the summation of X times F, which is your data items times your frequency. So you want to basically have to multiply the two together because you want to make sure you identify that there's more than one of those. All right. So, let's look at what we have. 
So it says use the frequency distribution to find the mean of stress levels. So what I like to do is make another part to this. All right. I like to add on to the chart that I already have. So, this is going to be X times F. So, your data item times your frequency. So, you have 0 times 2, which is going to give you 0. We have 1 times 1, will give you 1. We have 2 times 3, that will give you 6. Then we're going to have 3 times 12 to give you 36. Then we have 4 times 6 to give you 64. We will have 5 times 18, which will give you 90. Then we have 6 times 13, which will give you 78. Then we will have 7 times 31, which will give you 217. Then we will have 8 times 26, which will give you 208. Then we will have four, I mean, 9 times 15, which will give you 135. Then we have 14 times 10, which will give you 140. So what you did was you multiplied X times F. That's the whole point of doing this. So when we do the mean for this, it'll be X bar is equal to the summation of X times F over N. Now, what we want to look at is we want to we want to add all this together to get the summation of X times F. Now, when we do this, get the summation of x times f, we got to add them all together. So when we add them all together, we get 975 over. Now, to get in, you have to add all of the frequencies. You have to add all the frequencies. So add them. So it's 2 plus 1 plus 3 plus 12 plus 16 plus 18 plus 13 plus 31 plus 26 plus 15 plus 14. So we add all those together, you should get 151. Now, when you divide, you're going to get roughly about 6.46. <clears throat> so that's your mean, roughly about 6.46. Remember, when you find the N, it's the total number of frequencies. So you got to add up all the frequencies together to get you in. All right, if you don't understand something, let me know. So just take a minute and write this down. So let's look. All right, the median. The median is the data item in the middle of each set of ranked or ordered data. To find the median of a group of data items, the first thing you need to do is arrange the data items in order from smallest to greatest. The second thing you need to do, if the number of the data item is odd, then the median is the middle number of the list. If the, if the number of data items are even, then the median is the mean of the two middle um, data items. So that means you have to uh, add two data items and then divide by two. All right. Let's look at how you do this. So the first thing we're looking at is we have said find the median. So the first thing we got to do is put this in order. So we need to say we have 84, then we have 88, then we have what? 
90, then we have 95, then we have 98. Now, we have an odd number of numbers here, right? So, we notice that we got five numbers, so the, the middle number should be the third number, so which is 90. All right? So when we do this, you just got to make sure you put it in order and then you got to figure out how many numbers that you actually have. So when you see median, you, you think about middle number after you put them in order. Let's look at another example. So we have this example right here. Now, first thing we have to do is put them in order. We will have seven. Then we got 13. Then we have 15. Then we have 25. Then we have 28. Then we have 34. Then we have 47. Then we have 59, then we have 68, and then 74. So we have a total of how many numbers? We got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 numbers. So now we have to look at the fifth and the sixth number. So we got to look at these two numbers here because those are the numbers that are in the middle. So now to get to get our median, we have to do 28 plus 34 over 2. So this will give us what? 62 over 2. And that will equal what? 31. So our median is 31. So remember, if you have an even uh, amount of data items, you have to do what? Add the two middle terms, the two middle numbers, and then divide by two. So let's look at something. <clears throat> so it says listed below are the number of letters in nine of the longest words in the English language. It says find the median number of letters for the nine longest words in the data item, a range from smallest to least. Now, so if you notice what, what we have here is already in order. But the whole purpose of this, we want to look at this thing that we have here. We're trying to find the position of the, the middle term. Now, usually this is used for bigger data sets, but to, to get the understanding of what we're doing, we want to use the small data set first. So, we got n plus 1 over 2. So, we need to know what n, what n is, right? So, n we know is 9 because it said what? 9 longest words in the English. So, we already know what n is, right? So, we got 9 plus 1 over 2. Which that gives me what? 10 over 2. And that gives me 5. So this means that our median is in the fifth position. So if we were to count over, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So this is our median, which is 28. Because it's in the what? Fifth position. So now, this is an easier ter ter uh, way to do this. Now, when you look at a bigger data set, you will have to add up the, the frequencies until you get to that number or above that number. So let's look at the next example so we can see exactly what we're doing. So remember this from earlier. We already found the mean of this. And we already found what? The total number of <clears throat> the x times f, right? So we already found the total, the total number that's in the sample. Remember, it was what? n is equal to 151. 
This was from the previous example we had earlier with this table. Now, if we know that n is equal to 151, we could do 151 plus 1 all over 2. So we get 152 over 2, which gives us what? 76 position. All right. So with the 76 position, with the 76 position, so now we have to start adding our frequencies. So we just want to start adding the frequencies because we want to get to the 76 position. Now, we want to keep, we want to add them until we get down to either 76 or above 76. Because if we go above 76, that means that the one that made it go above that would be where your middle number would be. So let's look. <clears throat> so when we add and we get to here. So let's add these up. So we got we got 2 plus 1 plus 3 plus 12 plus 16 plus 18 plus 13. That gives us 65. So from here to here gives us 65. But we need what? We need to find the 76 position. So let's let's again let's add one let's let's add one more section to this. Let's go here. Now, if you look at all of this, that gives us what? Plus what? 13 plus what? 31. It gives us 96. So that means that the 30, the 76 percentile or 76 percent position is when you within the sevens. So the median is seven. Now, remember, when you answer the question, it needs to be what? Your X value when you do these medians because the, the frequencies tell you the number of times that you see it. All right, so keep that in mind when you're doing these problems. I don't want you to get it incorrect because you're, um, you, you put the wrong number. All right, so make sure if you have any questions about this, you make sure you email me or message me on Microsoft Teams. If you make sure, if you message me on Microsoft Teams, you'll get a quick response and I can kind of show you exactly what and tell you what exactly needs to be done with this. All right, so let's look at the next example. So five employees in a manufacturing plant earn salaries of 19700 20,400, 21,500, 22,600, 23,000 annually. And you have a section manager has a annual um, salary of 95,000. So the first thing we want to do is find the median of the six of the um, six people. Now, if you look at it, they're already in order. All right. So now we have what? We have six of them, so we have to find the what? The third. We got to find the third and the fourth. The third and the fourth um, data item. So it would be 21,500 and 22,600. So we would add the two. So we got 21,500. Plus 22,600 and divide this by 2. So that'll be what? 44,100 
all over 2, which equals 22,050. That's your median. So usually you might see the median for a job is 22,050. Now let's look at how they how they express the mean of this. So we're gonna find the mean. So we had the we got ninth, we're gonna say we got X bar is equal to 19,700 plus 20,400 plus 21,500 plus 22,600 plus 23,000 and then plus our 95,000. And we know it's all over what? Six. So we got X bar is equal to, we'll get 202,200 all over six. Then that's roughly about 33,700. Now, the thing is, when you look up online and you look at jobs, and they say the average salary is thirty three thousand seven hundred. They're basically telling you that they take taking all the employees, adding up all their stuff, and dividing by the total number, and that's what you get. But you got to understand it's skewed a little bit because of the fact that you have one person who makes ninety five thousand. Everybody else makes under thirty thousand or close to twenty thousand. So if you look at this, you think that's oh, that's pretty good. But really, you're only going to be making about 20 some thousand or 19,000 like the lowest person makes. So keep that in mind. Don't let those things fool you. Unless it tells you it, you make exactly that, it's, it's different. And you can always, you know, counter offer or anything in that nature. So we talked about mean, median, and now we're going to talk about mode. The mode is the data item that occurs most often in a data set. Now, this is what I tell people. Mode, the mode means what appears the most. So, it's not the most number, it's the what appears the most. Now, if you don't have a number that appears the most, that means you have no mode. Or, if you have multiple numbers that appear the same Many times you can have multiple modes. You just you just um, separate them by a comma. So just keep that in mind. So let's look at this first example. So it says finding the mode. Now the first thing you have to do is look at what you got. So we know I have a 7 here and a 7 here. And it appears two times. So the mode... Is seven because that appears the most. Now, anytime you deal with a frequency distribution table, so let's look at a frequency distribution table. I'm gonna make one out of this data that we have right here. So let's just say I got X and I have my frequency. So I'm going to put this in order. So this is going to be two. And let's say I got four. I got seven, eight, and I have 10. I have how many twos? I got one, two. How many fours? I got one, four. I got two sevens. And I have what? One, eight, and one, 10. So usually when you see these, when you look for the, um, the mode, you have to look at the number of frequencies. Which one has the highest frequencies? Whichever one has the highest frequencies, that would be the one that you would choose. Like in this case that we already know, our highest frequency would be what? Seven, because we have what? Two of them. So don't let those little charts fool you when you're doing your homework. So you can make sure you're doing this the, correctly. 
So let's look at mid-range. So mid-range is found by dividing the lowest and the by adding the lowest and the highest um, data item, then dividing it the sum by two. Now, as you see, it says mid-range is equal to lowest data value plus highest data value and divided by two. Let's use this. Now, it says Newsweek magazine examined factors affect, if, uh, that affect women's lives, including justice, health, education, economics, and, polit and politics. Using these five factors, the magazine graded each 165 countries on a scale from 0 to 1. I mean, zero to um, 100. The 12 best places to be a woman and the 12 worst places to be a woman. It says find the mid-range among the 12 best countries to be a woman. So we're looking at one side, which is the 12 best countries to be a woman. So therefore, we should, we're should we not looking at this side. So don't look at this at all. You need to look at these. So now, we're trying to find the mid-range, so it's the, it's the lowest data value, which is 87.2, plus the highest, which is 100, and it's all over 2. So now, when we do this, we get what? We get 187.2 over 2, and that equals roughly about 93.6. So your, your mid-range would be 93.6. So make sure you have to read the question to make sure you can identify what you're actually looking for. Because if you looked at the whole chart, you would have used 0 and 100 and would have got 50%. But we don't want to do that because the thing is, it says the, the best places to be a woman, not the worst places to be a woman. So you don't use that data at all. So, make sure if you have any questions, you make sure you hit me up on Microsoft Teams or you send me an email.